for having me. It's really wonderful to be here. I love the business community, um, uh, primarily because I understand the words you're saying, like gherkins, <laughs> awesome, so is yaml and drush, but I have no idea what that means. But uh, I do understand uh, trying to scale your business and making sure you have good cash flow management. So these are kinds of words I understand that are said at the CXO level. Uh, but a little bit about myself, um, I'm Megan Sanaki, I'm Associate Director of the Drupal Association. Uh, does everyone know who the Drupal Association is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, you know, we're kind of growing up. We're here to foster and, and support the Drupal community. And um, I'll tell a little bit about that history of where we were and where we're going so you can understand how you can play a role in supporting the community with us. But, um, so as the associate director, it's always kind of a funny title, but it doesn't really, I think, say all that much, so I'll tell you what I do. So I oversee all of our community programs from DrupalCon, we're starting a lot of educational webinars, uh, Global Training Days, which is happening today, that's to grow our community with new developers and bringing them in around the world on the same day. And now we have a marketing and communications department, which is pretty exciting. And um, so their job is to share the news with the community, letting people know about things like uh, Drupal Dev Days, uh, saying like, hey, let's all go to these sprints or participate in uh, the sprints over the birth for Drupal's birthday, and trying to get people to really um, mobilize and uh, share whatever news we that's relevant. Okay. And um, one of the new things we're going to start doing is starting to promote Drupal out into the marketplace. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and what it means for you and how we can even work together here in the UK on that. Um, and then, of course, I oversee all of our revenue programs. So whether that's generating uh, funds by, you know, getting sponsors for DrupalCon or our partner programs, like the supporting partner program, or advertising on Drupal.org. My uh, other role is to make sure that everything we do is properly funded. So just a, a little history. Who went to DrupalCon London? Awesome. So DrupalCon London was my first project. I was the first person hired at the time the Drupal Association, you know, like with anything with open source, I stand on the shoulder of giants, right? Like they gave me a job to help steward a community asset called DrupalCon. They're like, just make that go and sell some sponsorships. And DrupalCon was the very first one. And so that's when I really got to un, uh, get to meet the community. Um, and because I was selling sponsorships, I was talking with all the, the, business, the business people and hearing their needs, especially right here in the UK. So I, I feel like I have a lot of friends in the room, actually, uh, because this is where I fell in love with the Drupal community. And uh, I've had a couple years of fostering relationships. And so when I was at DrupalCon London, that's when I really started to be able to ask, like, you know, questions like, well, how can we help, or what do we need, and what does it mean to foster and support the Drupal community? Um, and at the time, what, we, what I found was like, there's this huge community, and we're like kind of like over here. We had a volunteer board and two staff people. Um, and at the time, we were just really doing Drupal cons and making sure we were uh, generating the funds to uh, pay for Drupal.org hosting. Um, and also, well, uh, I think the board paid for uh, community members to help with the Git migration. That was a little bit before my time. And we had some small income coming in. I mean, 1.8 million is not small, but, you know, when I hear all the needs, it's kind of small. Um, and just very little awareness of who we were. Uh, I don't think people knew DrupalCon London was put on by the Drupal Association. So those were just some of the things that we were seeing. Really, just a really new organization kind of starting to grow up. Um, yeah, and so these, when I was talking with the business community, I was hearing all these needs. Like, these are the common things that I would hear, especially, I think this might be my sixth or seventh CXO, right? So you start to hear common themes, and of course, there might be freelancers that have different needs than a larger company that might have 30 people in it, but overall, you'd hear needs like, hey, how do I scale my bench? I need to find and retain talent. Um, you know, I need to find development partners. How do, I, how do I structure those? What should I be looking for? Or how do I find the right outsourcing company and, and create that uh, relationship that has a lot of trust um, and good best practices around it? Um, then, of course, there's like, how do I grow my business? I was a developer, and then my buddy's a developer. We started a company, and we have developers, and now I need to know how to grow this thing. I think I heard this word called marketing. 
you know, it's like I, I don't mean to trivialize, but like I've, I've really enjoyed some of those conversations where, you know, we've had to talk about what, you know, lead generation and, and how to really culture your, your contact management database and content marketing and all these things around uh, about growing your business and how to do it. Uh, and then, of course, even how to partner to grow your business. And then another one that's come up a lot is um, cash flow management. You know, okay, I want to grow, I want to grow. I put all my eggs in this one client, it disappeared. I have no money, right? Like that's, that does happen. And so that's a big question that tends to come up a lot as well. Um, and then another one that I think is kind of interesting, I've seen in some places as a trend is um, shifting to a product company. Like, we love doing this web development work, but also I have this idea for a product, but I can't do both. That's a really hard shift. And how do I have one company that's able to do both? So those are some really great discussions. And also just, you know, some trends that I'm seeing in the Drupal business community. Um, but one thing that was kind of frustrating was I, I heard this in 2011, and even Drees went on stage uh, for his keynote. I don't know if any of you remember this. I remembered it really well. Uh, he went on stage and said, Yes, the Drupal Association needs to lead in marketing Drupal. <laughs> and it's like, well, is that me? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> so, you know, there was just like so many things that we wanted to do and so many things that the, commu the business community wants us to do. Um, and uh, we just, you know, we were, we were just at, at that stage where we weren't ready to take it all on. But we have a really great board. Um, we have, uh, a board that's elected. We also have um, community elected board members. So like uh, Pedro, who's here today, um, uh, was uh, on the on the board recently, and and Steve. <laughs> Steve was on the board as well. Sorry, I just forgot your name there for a minute. Anyhow, so they give us also feedback from the community to make sure that we are moving, uh, crafting a vision and a mission and um, objectives that really move us in the direction that serves the community. Um, and so they say, yeah, that's right, we need to do more. We really need to invest, we need to have a staff, let's move. And so the last couple, the last two years is really about really accelerating and growing and building and uh, so that we can come out and, and um, be able to articulate where we can go to better serve the community and how we're going to get there. So um, just a couple months ago, our new executive director, Holly Ross, issued our um, 2014 leadership plan. And it articulates where we're heading and how we're going to get there starting in 2014. Um, and you can go to the Association, Drupal Association website. We had a whole webinar on it. And it, it's quite an opus, right? Like we're trying to really make sure we're, we're being very transparent and clear about how we want to help serve the community. But in terms of a vision, it's grow Drupal from 3 to 10% of the web, right? So. But we'll get a little bit more clear about what that is, but right, like, think big, like, let's go there, let's do more. And, um, of course, we want to not be that little, like, circle off to the side. We want to be the center of, the, of a strong community. Um, and by the center, we mean, like, we want to be someone that's providing services and support <coughs> to help really grow and strengthen this community and kind of touching the lives of all the Drupalers and uh, making it easier for you to do what you do. And then, of course, uh, Drupal Association exemplifies a well-run organization. Like, we can actually do the things we say we do, and we do it well. And it's funded. So these are, this is a, our, our long-term vision, but this is the one I think that impacts you the most. Because growing Drupal from 3 to 10% of the web is not just doing marketing campaigns. It's not just doing market awareness. I mean, that really takes that we have, um, uh, we're acquiring more Drupal talent, and it, there's really an easy onboarding for them to uh, uh, understand Drupal, to um, uh, adopt it, to go through all that learning process, and then come out as a contributing member within the community. And a lot of that's done on Drupal.org, right? So that needs to be improved, and we need to really fix our community home in order to make that happen, so we're investing there. Um, and so, you know, in terms of like looking at this, what this means and all the fixes that have to happen here and all the investments, I mean, I'm, we're talking more Drupal talent for you. Um, we're making it hopefully easier for your developers and staff to develop, to, um, to collaborate on the project, to find the modules that they need to find fast uh, for your clients, um, you know, make it really easy for people to learn, uh, to, to learn Drupal 
but also uh, some, well, I'll talk a little bit more about marketing and how we can help uh, get the word out about Drupal in your business. So, so in the, tw in the 2014 leadership plan, we have two imperatives. There's a lot that we're doing this year, but I think the two things we really are pushing forward is uh, making Drupal.org shine, which means uh, we're investing in really uh, improving Drupal.org, really making it a community home that supports us. Um, and the other one is cultivate a successful Drupal 8 launch, and that would be a marketing campaign for Drupal 8. So um, let me talk just a minute about the Drupal.org improvements. So again, we work for and with the community, um, and so uh, Juries has created through governance some working groups on infrastructure, software, and content. And so we have these uh, community like strategists who are saying this is what we need to be doing. Um, uh, in these three areas. So what excites me is this, we are, we are staffing a Drupal.org technical team because this project overhaul Drupal.org and really give you the developer tools that you need, uh, test bots, love saying that word, um, and even doing, uh, making the site better for um, potential clients to find you, like all these things, making the inf information architecture improve, like all these things, uh, it's a big job, and we've been really fortunate that so many volunteers have helped with Drupal.org over time, but now it's such a big project, we really need dedicated staff. So we'll still collaborate with the community to do this work, but, uh, you know, a volunteer will not be able to do all this work, and that's not fair to even ask them of that. So we are actually, for the first time, investing now as much as we invest in DrupalCons. We are going to be investing 850,000 uh, pounds in Drupal.org improvements this year, mostly in the staff, to make, to make the improvements go. Um, and so one of the things that excites me, like when I think about the vision, uh, I'm on the content working group, and so th I'm, I'm dealing, working with uh, like George DeMette and um, Roy Schlotten and uh, Jeff Eaton, they are on the working group, so they're helping to strategize and steer the direction of this um, change. And they're starting, uh, they want to do a whole redesign in 2015. And I'm excited where this is going to go. It's going to start with user research first, and then go uh, have a content strategist hired to um, come back with recommendations of, well, who are the personas coming to our site, right? Like if you were uh, like Johnson & Johnson, it's like, I want to use Drupal, I don't know what this is. Like you come here, they, they'll just be like, what? What? Like, they just want to run away. Not that they do. I know they're one of our good Drupal shops, so. Um, so one of the visions we have is that this is going to be all redesigned with really great research. And so, Giles, I need to speak with you. I don't know where you are, but I want to pull you in and pick your brain, right? So this is all obviously where community members can help us. Um, but what I'd love to see is that the, you know, a move where the site's really serving personas with the content that they need to make a decision to adopt and use Drupal and contribute back. And from a business perspective, I really would love to see that there's a whole business section that's really tailored to them, has uh, a great look and feel, really demonstrates the power of Drupal, makes it really easy for them to see how we stack up against um, you know, other offerings, why they should choose Drupal, case studies, and obviously uh, pointing them to a marketplace where they can find you in, in a really easy way. Um, you know, hey, I could dream big. I'm mean, even thinking, I think it was um, Jan from Exo that even said, hey, tie it to a marketing automation tool and let's turn that into lead generation for the community. You know, like why, why can't we do that uh, for the association <coughs> to serve the community in that way? Um, you'll also find me asking you that question, can we do that? So get ready uh, with your response because we're listening. So these are some of the things about Drupal.org we're improving. Um, we're also going to create a Drupal job board this year. Uh, so we always hear about the needs for improving the talent marketplace in Drupal. And um, one of the ways we want to do that is to come up with a professional grade Drupal specific job board. We've been working with um, uh, Greggles and um, Scott Runyon and um, Ezra who maintain the groups.drupal.org slash jobs site right now, so it's, it's, it's um, a job site that's been used for a while, but it isn't um, serving all of the needs, and so they are giving us feedback of how we can expand that, and we 
We're getting ready to pick that vendor and hope to have this built and launched uh, before DrupalCon Austin. So, so uh, it'll have things where it can be, you know, you can <coughs> geotarget your job postings. Uh, you can make it really clear if this person has to be in the office or remote. You know, it's going to be much more professional grade and hopefully help with, um, help you find the right talent, especially as we start more initiatives to bring more talent into the community. Oh, also, Headley Smith is in the room. He, yes, thank you. So anyhow, also local talent, if you're looking for any apprentice, uh, an apprentice for your business, um, Headley Smith in the, in the back of the room is helping with a program called Happy Apprentice something. And it's, it's kind of like a <laughs> government endorsed program for apprentices here in the UK, and it's specifically to nurture Drupal talent and help them find, um, you know, a work home. So uh, just a resource, so you can see him later if you're interested. Um, okay, so the other thing that we're working on this year, the other big initiative, and, um, you know, we have to thank people like Gabor and Paul Johnson and lots of people that are really helping drive the, the, the thinking behind this um, initiative. So, like I said, when Drew's went on stage and I was like, I don't know who's going to do this. Like, I'm so excited. We actually have a team to help mobilize volunteers, um, but also to do a lot of the heavy lifting work. Um, and so Joe Saylor is our marketing communications director. And Lee Carver is our content writer. And um, so they'll be working with the community to start a real marketing PR campaign. Um, you know, budgets are limited, but I think if we all work together, we can, we can make a real dent um, when we go to announce Drupal 8. So we broke it into three phases. Phase one is your pre-release, doing a lot of prep work. I'll go into that. Um, this is where uh, Gabor's been helping us a lot with the content and getting our message down right, really understanding the personas who need to uh, learn about Drupal and what's really important for them to learn so that we can write the correct content and reach out to them in the right, through the right channels. Um, and then phase two is uh, release time. So this is where you have your big bang for your marketing campaign and you um, uh, will see a lot of PR um, happening. When Drews will be, um, be, be doing a lot of interviews with the press. Um, and um, of course, we'll be doing a lot of announcements. We have some paid advertising that we can do. That's, a, that's like a big deal for us. And uh, so we're kind of moving into a real marketing campaign at that phase. And then phase three will be uh, kind of like your rolling thunder, which is where we'll just make sure the content keeps getting out there, follow-up interviews, sharing of, of stories uh, around what did we learn with Drupal, um, and uh, stats, like how many downloads do we have now. So you'll, you'll see this is not just a, a blip that we want this um, this functionality within the association to keep growing and to keep supporting um, all the businesses um, even beyond this release. So just a few things that we have started doing is we have started to build some buzz. Um, you know, as, we, as, as we're looking at the, at the timeline and just when is this going to be released, we're going to, we decided to save a lot of our PR work a lot closer to the release, but we have done some and so we've already gotten some ink. So, you know, these are great things you can um, share you know, with clients if they want to know, hey, don't listen to me, look at Computer World. And um, also, uh, again, with Gabor's help and the help of others, like WebChicks, um, we now have uh, Drupal.org slash Drupal 8. Drupal.org slash Drupal dash 8.0. <laughs> so, Drupal slash 8. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. And, um, and this is a, it's a kind of in a beta mode right now, so there's lots of content on there. Um, and it's meant f to be parsed very soon so that anyone can come there and then follow their track. I'm a developer. I'm a site builder. I'm a, an evaluator, like a, a, a CMS, like a CIO type, right? And then they will find the content that they need to understand what Drupal 8 is all about and why they should care and what they should do next. Um, and so this is going to be a, one of the call to actions in the campaign is to, is to point people here. And uh, even though it's in beta, it's already one of the, well, it already has 40,000 monthly page views by doing nothing, right? So this, this is going to be a pretty popular section of the, of the site. Um, we're also uh, going to need to create a lot of content to support this effort. So white papers, data sheets, um, presentations, videos. 
So all of this is coming. These are items that you'll be able to use too that we're going to share with the community. And you could even put your own brand in that and co-brand it with us and then use it for your clients. Um, but one of the things that we're really focusing on is, is uh, just using our communication channels to the community to let them know about um, where we are, uh, what we need to do, what we can do as a community to finish this release so that we can move into the marketing phase. And so, um, you know, we're letting people know about, uh, we let people know about the happy birthday Drupal sprint that happened around the world that was pretty successful trying to get uh, raise awareness about Drupal Dev Days or the sprint that's happening at this event. Um, and so that's where a lot of our energy is going right now. In phase two, um, as we release, I'm just giving you a heads up. If you remember for Drupal 7, there was a big around the world party. It was organized by a community member by um, Boris W. Boris. And uh, yeah, there he is. Yeah, he organized a global party. Isn't that amazing? And he's right in our room. So he's doing it again. And um, so he's going to be reaching out to um, businesses and, and organizers around the world and asking them to do this again. It is really powerful. So, so I'm just telling you now to get ready. Um, okay, again, so there's going to be a lot of marketing resources coming your way. Um, for the community, and uh, again, they're, we're designing it for you to use. Whether it's um, you, maybe you have a, a group um, that, uh, like the UK group, maybe you want to work collectively to promote Drupal 8, and you can use this. Or as an individual business owner, just so that we're all speaking from the same page, right? With um, of course, you'll put in your, your unique messaging about your company, what makes you special, but at least we're all saying the same thing and we're really getting the word out about Drupal 8. And um, So anyhow, we'll have a lot of tools coming um, available soon. Uh, one of the things I'll be asking is, um, are we making the right tools? What do you need? Do you need boilerplate for your RFP? You, you know, we're really open to whatever your needs are. Um, Right, so, you know, again, with, um, with this work, how can you help? Drupal 8's obviously needs uh, as much donation, uh, time donated, donated as possible. So if you have modules, get them ready for Drupal 8. If you could do sprints or let your staff go and, and do sprints, please let that, you know, make the time for that. Um, you know, let them know about the different sprints happening around. I think Robert Costello is still doing his weekend sprints. You know, there's just a lot of opportunities to give back and help complete this project. Um, and then, of course, you know, we can all, you can contact me at any time if you want to understand how to use these tools for your, for your business. <coughs> and we're here to help with um, brainstorming. We're always here to help with training. Um, so, so you just let me know what your needs are, and then um, we will just find our way through that. But another way to help is by joining the Supporting Partner Program. This is a program that started about two years ago, um, and it's for Drupal businesses who want to give back financially. It goes right to kind of like to the core of our main initiatives. So Drupal.org is uh, the improvements there. Like I mentioned, it's 850,000 pounds. A lot of that's being funded by the supporting partners who have joined this program, as well as some, some nice reserves that we've had. <laughs> but. Really, the supporting partners have been there through a, through a lot of the um, on-ramp here uh, to start the improvements for Drupal.org. Um, and so, of course, in return, we want to make sure that they're highlighted as community leaders, giving them visibility in the community as someone who's really giving back. Uh, we give them visibility on Drupal.org uh, through our communication channels. Um, they get discounts at DrupalCon, and hey, if you don't want to sponsor DrupalCon, that's okay. We're going to give you visibility anyhow. We just want people to know that you are really stepping up and helping us in a big way. So we have actually several of our partners are here today. Um, just to name a few, I know we have Deason and Adiax and Exov and um, probably Wonderkraut is here, but I didn't see them, Cat Gemini. Um, and then um, continuing on, we get so many now, I'm just going to figure out how to like do this in a slide deck that isn't all about our partners. but. Um, you know, commerce guys as well, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm probably missing people now at this point. But anyhow, we've had, um, we've been really fortunate to have this kind of support. So if this is a way that you would like to give back and know that your funds are going right towards improving your community home that supports the project. 
Um, you know, please see me. Please see Johanna Bergman, who's in the back of the room. And, um, and of course, any kind of help that you need, just come to us. If we don't know the answers, uh, we know someone who does. So uh, you can follow us, you know, come to our, our website. Uh, you can follow our blogs. We have a monthly newsletter. Um, of course, you can follow, oh, come to our board meetings. If you're looking to really stay on top and try to stay really transparent, we measure everything we do now, so you can even see our dashboard of how we're achieving and all these uh, initiatives that we just talked about. Uh, you can um, see the, the board uh, minutes, and we post that, all of our information as well, uh, on at Drupal Association for our social media. So, um, so these are the kinds of questions that I have for you. We don't have to talk about it now, but I'll probably find you somewhere this weekend um, because I really want to make sure that whatever we do really serves the UK market um, and helps set you up for success. Um, so in terms of marketing, <coughs> You know, where should we put the marketing materials so it's easy to find and download? Drupal.org, ADO, GDO, you know, these things matter. Um, also, uh, do you want uh, press release boilerplates? Uh, do you need some coaching on how to pitch the press? Like maybe you want to go after .NET. You know, a lot of our work's going to be going uh, through IDG, which will end up getting into some glo global magazines. But um, if you're looking for something very specific in your backyard, we can help you um, if you need some coaching and some materials. Um, are you looking to do collectively, maybe not your company, but maybe collectively, are you looking to do some industry events uh, to get the word out about Drupal and Drupal 8 specifically? Uh, we do have a grants program, and uh, I'd love to tell you more about the community cultivation grants that you can find out about on our website. <coughs> this is available for you to um, fund uh, the growth of marketing awareness. And um, yeah, should we be, should the Drupal Association come here and do uh, an evaluation, a CMS evaluator event? Should we get the room full of CIOs that don't know about Drupal? Give you a chance to um, interact with them. You know, these are things that we're looking to fund. We just want to know if we should fund it. And then, of course, should we be doing some uh, webinar trainings, kind of on the CXO type of topics? How do you market? How do you manage cash flow? Things like that. So those are some of our burning questions. And um, I think I'm out of time. But if you have any questions for me, please let me know. You mentioned at DrupalCon Prague that you had the intention to open an office in London. Yeah. Has there been any development in that regard? Uh, not in terms of opening an office. We now have it so that we have a UK financial branch. Like, in the simplest terms, we have a bank account here where we can do transactions um, to support the UK community. So we can be your fiscal sponsor. So anyone who wants kind of like that nonprofit tax-free status for their community group, you can now take advantage of that. We can be your fiscal sponsor. And then you can keep your money there if you have any profits from your event. And then you can just reuse that the, the next year. So we're, we're, we're feeling our way through all of that, um, but we're, we're definitely making some progress. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for your time, Thank guys. You very much. Thank you. Yeah.